Welcome to Touch Animator. Touch Animator is the premier 3D character animation tool for tablet devices. Using the unique touch capabilities of tablets like this iPad here, uh, you can easily pose and manipulate and animate 3D characters. Uh, and because tablet devices like this iPad are so light and mobile, uh, you can basically do your animation on the fly anywhere you want at any time. All right, so let me go ahead and just walk you through some of the features and how the program works. So as you can see here, uh, I've just been tapping on uh, sections of this character. Uh, once you tap on this part of the character, you'll see this little selection halo uh, appear. And then you can simply just start dragging around the screen. Uh, you can either drag on the object itself or drag off anywhere on the free side of the screen. And uh, that will move the uh, object in the X and Y planes. If you drag with two fingers back and forth, the, character, the uh, object will move back and forth on the Z axis, all right? And the objects move the way you would expect. For example, if you tap on the guy's foot, uh, the leg will raise, all right? If you tr tap on the hips, the hips will move. If you tap on the head, for example, the head will rotate. And if you tap with, or drag with two fingers on the head, the head will tilt from side to side. Same thing with the torso. Okay, so once you've started uh, playing with the software a little bit, you'll get a feel for how the characters, uh, the character moves and operates. Some of the controls, for example, like the hands and the feet, uh, you can see here there's these little boxes here which are uh, uh, targets for the, uh, are, uh, the elbows and the knees. Wherever these move, the elbows and the knees will point at those objects. Okay, so you can easily move the uh, arms into place and you always have a target for those, those things. Uh, there's also some hidden control objects here. Sometimes you might want to show those or hide them depending on you know, the clutter of the screen. So you can show the control objects by tapping on this button here. It says show control objects. So now you can see the IK targets for the uh, arms and the legs. Okay? Uh, some controls, for example, like the hands and the feet, uh, they can both move and rotate. So in order to go into rotation mode for those, just tap on this little button down here in the corner and you'll see it turns the rotate icon and so now you can go ahead and rotate that object and then to go back to the translate mode tap on that again and now you're back in translate mode alright so that's how to pose and manipulate your character uh, obviously you'll want to move the camera at some point so you can get a different view on the 3D scene uh, in order to do that uh, tap on this button to move between the pose and the camera modes Okay, so now that I'm in camera mode, dragging with one finger will orbit the camera. It'll orbit around the center point of the scene. Dragging with two fingers will move the camera, slide it across the floor on the X and the Z axis, and then dragging with three fingers will allow you to move the camera in the uh, Y and the X axis. Okay, so it moves it up. So easily, with three fingers, you can move the camera to wherever you want. Uh, there's also, on the sidebar here, there are some shortcuts. Uh, you'll see here under the camera section, there's a top, front, left, and right uh, view shortcut keys. All right? Okay, so now that we've got our character uh, posed the way we want, let's tap to go back into the selection mode. So now we can manipulate the character. Uh, now we can go ahead and animate. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, down at the bottom of the screen is a timeline, and you simply either drag or tap on a frame, to move to that frame. There's also a button here that says go to. So you can just type in the frame you want to go to and it'll move there. All right. So just tap on a new frame uh, of the animation and then simply repose your character. Okay. And then you can just drag through here Okay, you can drag back and forth in the timeline to see the animation occur. If you want to play the animation back, just tap on the playhead and it will just play the animation over and over. All right, so that's the basics of animation. Uh, there's also a suite of tools over here. There's a few um, uh, keyframe convenience tools uh, on the sidebar here under the keyframing section. So as you can see here, you can, for example, you can key the selected uh, uh, object key all the objects on that frame, uh, delete the key on the selected object, or delete all the keyframes of a selected object. All right? So let's go ahead and set some more keyframes for this arm, for example. OK. 
Okay, and then we'll move this around. Okay, so uh, let's say, for example, I'm not happy with the path of that object there. Uh, I can tap on the Edit Path button. Move this up farther. And then you'll see the path, uh, the animation path, as a 3D object. And every keyframe is represented by these spheres, and every keyframe is a 3D, 3D object. So if you tap on that, it turns green to show you it's selected. Then you can move this just like you would any other object in space, just by dragging on it, or you can you know, move uh, back and forth with two fingers to go on the z-axis. All right. So you can radically change the path of an object here. When you're done, tap on Edit Path again. That will go away. And now you can see that the object is following the new path. Okay. Sometimes it's difficult to find a part of the character you want to select. Uh, down here, you can tap on the Quick Select button. That brings up kind of a schematic view of your character up in the corner. So then you can just simply tap on the part of the object you want in the Quick Select menu. And that will easily select it for you. Okay. That's some of the basics. Uh, the dope sheet allows you to manipulate groups of keyframes at a time. Uh, at this point, it's a little bit more of an experimental feature. So you can tap on Select and then Band Select some keyframes. And they'll turn yellow to show they're selected. Then you can move or deselect or delete them. So if I want to delete all those keys, I'll just delete that. You can drag on this uh, scrubber at the bottom to go through your scene. So every single uh, joint in the character and every single keyframe is laid out in this spreadsheet view. Okay, so that's some of the basics of it. The rest of it we can get to at a different time. Uh, let me show you the different characters that come with the software. So, <clears throat> uh, we can go ahead and tap New to bring up the new character list. Oops. Okay. So this one here is called the cartoon character. If we go to the next one, it's called the human figure. And as you can see here, this character is simply a... Uh, um, how shall I put it? kind of a maquette of a human human person. And it has the same controls as the other character. It has IK uh, arms and legs, and FK torso and head. Uh, you can also rotate the pelvis by switching back and forth between the rotate and translate tools. Uh, the ball with legs character, uh, that allows you to just, let me tap on quick select to deselect that. Uh, ball with legs character is good for learning some of the fundamentals of animation because it's just the ball, the pelvis and the uh, legs. So actually later on I'm going to show you how to do a simple walk cycle with this character here. Uh, the dragon character, as you can see here, the dragon is actually all FK, which means every part of the character rotates when you tap on it to make the controls easy to use here. So you can see we can pose the wings and the arms and everything like that. Kind of hard to reach the tail from there, but that's the dragon character. Okay. Uh, the artist model is, again, another human model. The uh, difference with this one is that the arms, the only thing that's FK are the legs. Uh, the arms are, I, are I'm sorry, the only, only thing that's IK is the legs. Uh, the arms and the torso and the head are all FK, so that way you can have some more control over the posing of the arms here. Okay. The final character is called the Paladin, and it's sort of like a knight character. You see his IK, uh, his IK um, legs, and let's go back, and then the arms are FK, and you see he has a shield and a sword on the other arm here. It's a bit difficult for me to manipulate this while the camera's over my shoulder there, so kind of bear with me there a little bit, but you can see, get the intention of each character. Okay, so that's the, the different characters that come with the software. So, I think I've shown you the basics of the software for right now. So, let me go ahead and let's just, the best way, I think, to, you know, 
figure out some how to use some softwares just to go ahead and, and do a little quick demonstration. Uh, let's start using this in a practical scenario. So let's go ahead and say new ball with legs and let's do a very simple walk cycle. Okay, so by default we have 90 frames of animation, which is probably too, uh, too much animation for a walk cycle. So let's tap on max frames and type in 30. So now you see the timeline uh, stretches to 30 frames. And then I'm going to show the IK targets here. And then I'll move the camera over so that we are getting a good view of the character. Okay, and now I'll simply start posing the character on, in the extreme poses of the walk cycle. Okay, I'll move these uh, knee targets forward so that they're kind of out of the way here. Keep the uh, knees pointing forward. Okay, go to the front view, make sure that the uh, hips are placed over top of the character here. Okay, and then um, let's go ahead and uh, since we've keyframed those things, let's go to the end frame here and we'll say key all so that we have the same frame at the beginning and the end. And then we'll go into the middle frame, frame 15 here. And we'll just slide the feet back the opposite direction. Kind of jiggle the uh, hips there a little bit just to give it a little bit of uh, you know, a keyframe there. Okay, so let's play this back. And so you can see the feet sliding back and forth, as you would expect. Okay, so now we'll start doing the in-between in poses. So we'll go to frame 8 in this case. Move the hips up a bit. I think this foot's the one coming forward, so I'll move that foot up. Move the hips over top of that leg there. Okay. All right, so that's one foot moving forward. Now we'll move over to frame 23 here. Select that object. Move that guy up. So we'll start keyframing the other leg. Okay, so now we got... Okay, so we have some simple walking going on here. It's not going to win any uh, Pixar awards, but it's just to get you to show you how the software can be used. Okay, let me put some rotation on the feet here. Switch to rotate mode. And then I'll just very lightly kind of tap here to set some rotational keys on the feet. I'll go to frame 15 and do the same thing. Go to the last frame here. Make sure some rotation keys are set for the foot. All right, so let's start dragging through here. Back to frame eight. And I'll just drag this foot down here a little bit. Drag the foot up. Okay, so now his feet are planning some rotational keys there, okay? All right, let's start uh, doing some keys for this guy here. Frame 23. Let's just go ahead and drag it down a little bit. And then right before he plants, we'll have the toes go up. Okay. Let's move it around here so we can see what's going on. So you can see here, uh, within just a few seconds, uh, a minute actually, just because I've been uh, narrating this, we've got a very simple walk cycle going on, okay? And then finally, the final thing you'll want to do, uh, you can definitely take this to uh, anyone who you want to show animation to. You can go ahead and um, uh, show them this animation, for example, just take it with you or whatever. Uh, but another feature of the software, if you go to the main menu uh, and tap on the Export Animation button, then this field will come up and basically it'll parse all the keyframes and then it will uh, put those into a text format <clears throat> then you can simply just hold down your finger on there select all the text and copy it 
And then once you're done with that, say done, and you'll go back to the main menu. And then uh, what you can do is you can paste that into an email or text any kind of text document, send it to yourself. And uh, at this point, uh, we export uh, export uh, Touch Animator data into Blender. I have a plugin for Blender. Uh, on the website, there's the plugin and the, the uh, example files, uh, versions of these characters for Blender. And you simply just paste the data into a text field in Blender and tap on the button there that says uh, parse the data. And it will apply the data to the uh, character in Blender. And then you could further refine the animation or you could further, um, you know, uh, you know, render it or whatever you want to do with it, uh, or maybe convert it to another program's animation data if you wish. Uh, my hope is to start putting out plugins for other programs like Maya and Lightwave. Uh, those are in development right now. For right now, we have Blender, but uh, that is the basis of the software. And so, I hope you uh, get a chance to download it. Check it out and uh, you know give me some feedback. I, I use this software myself. I developed it originally as an in-house tool, so uh, it's going to be constantly under development. New features and bug fixes are going to be out uh, constantly. So keep stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy uh, Touch Animator. Okay, the final aspect of using Touch Animator is bringing the data animation data into Blender. So uh, this is a sample scene of the ball with legs character with the animation uh, walk cycle animation applied to it that we did earlier. And uh, basically there will be, a, on the uh, Touch Animator website, there will be sample files for all the different characters. Uh, if you don't see one for a character at this moment, uh, they'll be coming shortly. So uh, basically all you have to do is take the animation data that you emailed to yourself and paste it into this window down here in the lower left corner. You can see here that I already have some animation data applied. This is that walk cycle. And then the next thing you just have to do is uh, run the script. Um, if you're on, you should go to the object data tab here. And you can see selected right there, it looks like a little box. If you don't see anything here uh, related to touch animator in these panels, go over to the text uh, script editor here. Under text, go to run script. If it doesn't show up right away, you can just drag this window to refresh it. And then just simply, you'll see the uh, animation data show up here under the Touch Animator Importer tab. And then you just simply tap on Parse Data, and that will populate the uh, action editor here with the keyframes. And so as you can see here, the screen capture software is making it very difficult, but you can see the animation, uh, walk animation we did earlier applied to the ball with legs character. So that's it. I hope you enjoy using Touch Animator.